Our next unit of study in Algebra 2 is sequences and series. Now a lot of the material that's going to be used in sequences and series has parallels to things that have already been studied, particularly linear and exponential functions and operations, but these are a little bit different. First we're going to begin with terms of and definitions. First, a sequence. This is a set of numbers that follow a pattern. Any set of numbers that follows some sort of mathematical pattern is a sequence. Now we're going to be talking about a couple of types of sequences specifically, arithmetic and geometric in this unit of study, but anything that follows a pattern can be considered a sequence. A term of a sequence is a single element in that set. And when we start talking about the terms of a sequence, we'll say the fifth term, the sixth term, the twelfth term. If we're looking for a general term, we will say the nth term, and meaning some number. Now, the notation that's used for a sequence follows that pattern. A is used to denote a term, and then we have a subscript number that tells us where we're at. So A sub 1 is the first term, A sub 7 would be the seventh term, A sub n is going to be the nth term. Now when we start talking about the next term, that would be a way of saying a sub n plus 1. If we want to know what the previous term was, that would be a sub n minus 1. And these are going to be helpful when it comes to writing out rules for finding the terms in the sequence. Now when we start writing the rules, we have two different ways of doing that. The first is an explicit formula. And this is simply a method for directly finding the nth term of the sequence. Now with the explicit formula, we have a variable, and that variable is n. So if we're looking for a sub n, it will be in terms of that variable. Now if we want the fifth item, we go a sub 5, just like function notation, it's f of x and then f of 5. Recursive formula is a method for building a sequence from previous terms. Now with the recursive formula it's going to be along the lines of well to get the next term we take the old term and add 5. And we're going to talk about how to use these in different methods. So now now that we have the vocabulary and terminology down for sequences Let's begin looking at some. First, the explicit formula. Write the first 10 terms for the given formula. So a sub n equals 7n plus 2. You can see we have the subscript of n, and we are looking at a formula in terms of n. So if I want a sub 1, that is equal to 7 times 1 plus 2 which is simply 9. a sub 2 is going to be 7 times 2 plus 2 which, sorry, is 16. a sub 3 is 7 times 3 plus 2 which is 23 and continuing on we end up with this sequence of numbers in total. We have 9, 16, 23, 30, 37, 44, 51, 58, 65, and 72. The nice thing about a explicit formula like this is that if I want the 20th term, I can just substitute in the number 20 for n and then run through my formula. I don't have to build all the terms previous to it to get to where I want to be. Now, let's look at the second one. a sub n equals n divided by 3 minus 1. So we'll go through the same process. a sub 1 is 1 divided by 3 minus 1, which is a negative 2 thirds. a sub 2 is 2 divided by 3 minus 1, which is a negative 1 third. a sub 3 is 3 divided by 3 minus 1, which is 0. 
a sub 4 will continue this pattern, we'll get 1 third, and so on, until we have this full sequence of numbers. Negative 2 thirds, negative 1 third, 0, 1 third, 2 thirds, 1, 1 and 1 third, 1 and 2 thirds, 2, 2 and 1 third. So again, we have this sequence, and it is these specific points. We can find any point we want in the sequence simply by selecting the number n. Now that we've worked a little with explicit formulas, let's look at some recursion. Here's a pattern that is built using toothpicks or sticks of building triangles. In our first figure, we have one triangle, and it uses three sticks. In our second figure we end up with two triangles and it has a total of five sticks. Number three has three triangles and it uses seven sticks and number four has a total of four triangles and it uses nine sticks all together to make those. So how can we find the number of sticks that are going to be used for a set figure? And this is going to use the recursive formula that we've talked about. So the way it works is we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the pattern. So in this case, a sub n equals 3 plus 2. And that's the way it's going to work. In order to find any number of sticks used in the sequence, we're going to take the previous item. So a sub n equals a sub n minus 1, the previous term in the sequence, and we are going to add 2. This is the form of a recursive formula. The benefit is you know exactly how to go from one term to the next. The downfall is in order to find the 83rd term of the sequence, I have to first build the first 82. I can't go directly to it the way I can with an explicit formula. So with our mathematical patterns, sequences, we're going to be looking at different ways of building them. It's all going to be based on this explicit and recursive formulas. So make sure you have this vocabulary down and are ready to move forward.